I've got one that can see. Logic before authority. Behold, a white horse. In this video, I'm going to review and show you guys and show you even further for those of you that have seen why I say that the white horse of the four horses that is spoken about in the book of Revelations is riding. And I believe by the end of this video that you will agree that I am highly likely correct. I have further information that I'm going to show you to prove exactly what I'm talking about. So don't miss this video. So in Revelations chapter 6, now even if you are not a reader of the Bible, we have all heard about the four horses, right? Just bear with me. Listen to what I'm going to show you here. And if by the end of this video that you don't believe that I'm justified in showing you what I'm going to show you and that I'm highly likely correct, then unsubscribe. You don't have to listen to my nonsense anymore. So let me read this to you and then I'm going to show you the evidence. Okay? It says, chapter 6, verse 1, And I saw when the Lamb, which is referring to Christ, opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts, saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer the white horse. Now, when we think of this image in our head, of course, we think of a man on the back of a horse, and he's got a crown on his head, and he has a bow. Well, what is meant by this? Because the Bible is, it's parables, it's about, it's about symbolism, it's about being able to see what is written in the text and understand it, where most people can't. Because they would think that that's just what it means. And of course, that's absolutely not what it means. The, the reference of a horse is the reference of power, something with great power, okay? The crown, that's easy to see with what's going on right now that we're talking about the CV, that everybody is wearing these things on their face, right? But the bow, okay, let's look at the bow, okay? And we're going to come back to this in just a little bit, but let's look at the bow first. The bow, right? Okay, so let's get over here we're gonna come back to that because it further enforces exactly what I'm saying okay so let's look at the definition of a bow now the word bow is only used once in the entire Bible bow used one time see right there okay it says a bow apparently as the simplest fabric fabric you mean it's not a bow like you're shooting an arrow with well it could be looked at that way a little bit um, but think about what it says apparently is the simplest fabric a bow simple fabric fabric you know like the fabric that people are wearing on their face do you see that? So it's not talking about a bow like you shoot an arrow from. Although it is something that also means to give birth to something, to drive something forward. You know, kind of like a syringe when you pull it back 
and then push it forward just like a bow where you have an arrow in it you pull it back and then it goes forward just like a syringe mm -hmm. now it says that this is from the base root of G5088 so let's come over here and look at G5088 it says a strengthened form of a primary which is used only as alternate in certain tenses to produce from seed as a mother or a plant uh, the earth etc literally or figuratively to bear to be born to bring forth to be delivered be in travail okay bring forth be delivered be born be in travail to bear so what is it bringing forth well what does it go on to say to conquer and to conquer right it is bringing forth a lot of things but it is bringing forth one thing it's bringing forth is death and it is the conquering of the people of God's people it is the conquering of the temple okay so now let's take a look at something else so here is your simplest of fabric apparently this is the thing. And this woman has no idea what she is doing. Ignorance is death. Sound familiar? Stronger to get her it's about the conquering of the seed it's about the conquering of the temple to get her Okay, now let me show you something else. Okay, so if you want to make a mask, and some of you have seen me say this or show this before, but because I'm having to delete all my videos off of my channel on a regular basis to keep my channel from going disappeared. I need to show it to you again for those of you that are new or those of you that have forgotten. A template for making a mask. Well, look at that. The template is a bow. You know, shaped just like a bow, bow tie. And you cut it in the middle and put your string through it so that you got two bows on each side. So then you got a bow with two bows right and if you look at one half of it from the side it looks like a hatchet a weapon doesn't it so there again is further confirmation that this is the simplest of fabric that you make this with and it is the, it, it is even shaped as a bow and you have to put two bows on each side to make it work it is all right there for you this one's in your face and simple to see the corona crown simple to see now if you understand the things that I understand, that you understand that the language 
that is being written in this Bible was created using mathematics. And to further explain my point, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some of the words that are here, like white horse, and even white and horse. And I know that the people who wrote the languages, they used a method of uh, encoding words using mathematics to make certain words resonate with other words because it's about sound, it's about resonance, it's about it's about the word of the mouth, it's about the tongue. How did how does in Genesis does does it say that God created everything with with the he spoke it with the word. Everything is all about the word, it's about the tongue, it's about the language, it's about mathematics. And what they did was they used the basic toroidal field and they mapped it mathematically because that is the creation with everything exists within you can see a toroidal field on the macro scale meaning big scale in nature like with a hurricane that is a toroidal field okay torus you can see it uh, in a tornado you can see it in a uh, supercell thunderstorm the way that the air flows okay it's following the most basic and most true pattern of energy flow that exists and it exists not only in the macro but in the, the in the micro and even in the nano scale inside of our bodies everything exists and, and vibrates and has a uh, rotation of energy in it and they use that to create our languages not just English but pretty much all languages okay they meaning they way back when they wrote these languages somebody had to come up with this stuff and if we take a look using Gematria which is what they used in order to create the languages um, we can see meaning behind uh, the words in the mathematics like if we look at white and horse you'll notice that there's they're the same mathematically and harmonically see it says 1022 390 and 65 in the simplest form like down on the bottom there simple gematria a equals 1 B equals 2 C equals 3 and so on all the way to Z at 26 that's why if you take W H I T E and you add them up it comes up to 65 and there are several different there were meant there is many types of uh, methods of this as there are languages there's the simple there's the English there's the Jewish there's there's many of them okay I focus generally on the uh, on the uh, English and the simple gematria and sometimes I look at the other ones if I'm trying to further confirm something but this one's so straightforward that it's very easy to see so white and horse basically harmonically they mean they're the same uh, frequency the same energy okay and both of them match this you see See the numbers? The two on the bottom, the English and the simple. 390 and 65. So white matches that and horse matches that. It also matches that, which is what you are when you're willing to participate putting the simplest of fabric on your face in order to get something from the beast system. I also want to look at uh, some other words like conquer, okay, which is 558 and 93. And conquer mathematically is equivalent to that. Now this is these are not easy mathematics. To make these matches, it's it's means to one. So this is not 
anybody could say one or two of them are by chance, but we're already much further down the road than that, aren't we? In Jewish Dramatia, it matches Scorpion King, which is relevant because there is the story of the Scorpion King in the Bible coming out of the pit, right? Which I believe is related to this story that we're living through. And it is not by chance also that it, uh, that it matches this as well. See, 93 and then 93 and 558 in English and simple gematria. It's about harmonics, it's about the tongue as a sword. Harvest is also matched, very relevant. The black cube is also matched, very relevant. Now why is that relevant? It's relevant because of this, the cube. Why is it that have anything to do with the cube? Well, because on the website it has a cube on it. With a CV on top of it, right? And the numbers 777 are embedded on the cube. This is reference to the cube of Saturn and the cult that is behind it. So what do you think about that one? Bo just happens to match that guy. Fauci. Just coincidence, right? I can promise you it's not. Check this one out. Operation Warp Speed in Jewish Gematria matches the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry, which this man is a member. He is a Scottish Rite Freemason. Don't believe me? You don't have to, but it doesn't disqualify everything else that I'm showing you in this video to be true. But I've proven that before in previous videos, but we're not going to get into that right now again. Now, it also matches that. So that, mathematically and harmonically, matches that. Are we still in the realm of coincidence? When all these are means to one mathematical, uh, you'd stand a better chance going and taking Vegas or winning the lottery than what we've just viewed. That is correct. And how about that match? If we just shorten it to, to, to the two words, it is a exact match for that. Imagine that. He chose those words and put it like we were on some Star Trek episode and then it happens to be an exact match for that and that. And isn't it interesting that this guy's name is an exact match harmonically and mathematically to him and his co-part. Just a chance, just a coincidence, right? No, it's not. This is this is confirmation of exactly what I've been showing you. You see, I've been telling you that we are at war. And we are. We've been at war for quite a while. We just didn't know it. We were asleep. We've taken some punches already. Most everyone within the sound of my voice has been injured or damaged at some level by some part of this war the invisible enemy war right so here we have world war three and how is what is world war three about what is the goal the goal is transhumanism don't know what transhumanism is it's the combining of 
the tearing down of the male female system and combining it together with iron it's the Borg man it's the Borg it's right here in front of your face assimilation see the little blue lines because in warp speed and they're going through space flying just like on Star Trek it's the Borg it's about assimilation the combining of iron and clay but ultimately it will not cleave and the ones that go down this path will suffer the greatest of any man or woman that has ever suffered in the history of this world sure it will sound great it will look great it will even taste great but it will not be great. It will be... It will be death. It will be a sentence that your soul and your body cannot withstand. A bow, the simplest of fabric. just like they're wearing on their face so is this clear enough for you to know and understand why I say this and you know how it talks about it was a beast that came forth and said these things it said come hither and it said behold a white horse well, the first beast, if you look in Revelations 4, it tells you that it was a lion. The first beast was like a lion. And if you look at uh, the crest, the family crest of the Trump family, what does it have on it? It has a it has lions on it, and it has a fist reaching up through a cube, and with water splashing out on both sides, meaning time, and it is grasping the tip of the spear. If I'd have thought about that, I'd have had that pulled up for y'all guys so you could see it. Which many of you have seen it. But here we are with the tip of the spear thing again. You know, symbolically like the tip of the needle. Symbolically like what is the first thing that pierces the enemy. And who is the enemy? Well, mainly those of you that are believers that you have a Father in Heaven and that you choose to believe that His only Son that God chose to, to actually manifest through a virgin and have a Son that came here to change the rules and to allow us to be able to escape the grip of Satan and the hooks of Satan like Sandy Hook oops probably shouldn't have said that word I bet that triggered something but they are hooks like all of these things that hurt us and damage us they're the hooks that's why they love that word they're like a fishing hook they're hard they're easy, easy to go in but hard to come out The second beast was like a calf. The third beast had a face like a, as a man. The fourth beast was like a flying eagle. I find that interesting because it's relevant to the story here. Okay, And the story will continue as I further move into this 
try to understand because I'm looking at the other three horses and looking at as much as I can and as much time and effort and energy as I have in a day I'm trying to discern all of this stuff and bring it to you just like I have with this so I hope this has helped y'all guys and guys also as y'all guys know I am in the middle of having to move and it's going to get more expensive than I'm used to so if any of you guys that have the ability to buy me a cup of coffee about right now and drop it in my PayPal account that would be great and I would greatly appreciate it and uh, because I'm having to move I'm having a hard time finding a place I'm feeling pretty vulnerable um, at the moment and it would help to know that I'm going to be able to afford the place so anything y'all guys can do even if it's just a dollar or two hey a dollar or two from 10,000 people is a lot of money even though that won't happen but still you get what I'm saying alright guys I love you I'll put the link to that down below God loves you this is all a big test so there's there's no need to fret this is not the life that you need to worry about losing it's the life after this life that you that we need to be worrying about this simple season that we spend here on this earth is but just a test to see if we are good seed or if we are bad seed the bad seed gets burnt the good seed moves on and lives on it's just the method in which the way that God seen that it had to be done and I'm sure absolutely positive that it is the right way all right i love you guys talk to you real soon have a good day and good evening hi guys this is daniel alexander cannon here on logic before authority and we're going to discuss a couple of things today one thing well <laughs> oh man groundbreaking revelations that I'm not going to be able to get completely into in this video. It's going to take a, uh, a quite a bit more work to be able to bring it together, but I'm going to give you a hint to lead you down the trail, you might say, on, well, let's just say we're going to look at this new, um, this new movie that just came out, okay? I know, I know, movie, right? Okay, predictive programming. Um, but uh, this new movie, we're going to take a look at it. It, it, it just came out starting, it's called Debris, or Debris, uh, it just came out on March 1st. We're going to look at that towards the end of this video. The beginning of this video, we're going to look at the, uh, the white horse some more, okay? Um, we're going to look at the white horse and things that are related to that um, we're going to be getting into um, discussing more ways that you can look at the bow okay um, especially and uh, just discussing this I think you're going to find this very interesting and uh, and somewhere in here we might look at a little bit of uh, gematria as well because it is absolutely relevant uh, let's see where do we want to start so let's see here I don't want that Let me back up here okay let's let's start uh, maybe here this was a comment from uh, as you can see Catherine Miller says thank you Daniel for all you do I thought I would share this revela uh, revelation I think uh, six to the white horse rider given a crown means uh, Corona holds a bow uh, Greek strongs means toxin 
5115 may be a poisonous arrow the rider is carrying. Also, and this is where it gets, uh, actually it's in the, the next comment where I'm, you'll see. It says, uh, also Revelation 18.23, for by their sorcery all nations were deceived. Uh, sorcery is pharmakia in Greek, talking about witchcraft, potions, poisons, pharmakia. You know, like your pharmacy that you go to is what she's referring to here. Okay, um, and then there's this one. This one is what led me to realizing the uh, movie come out called Debris. But the reason why that is so interesting is going to blow your mind. It literally blew my mind, and I'm going to touch on it some in this video towards the end. So don't uh, don't leave early. Okay, but uh, let me let me show you this says uh, February 21 two planes dropped debris okay says they were both Boeing planes 777s okay Boeing 777s um, 777 is the number that is on the operation uh, warp speed cube the Bohr cube 777 is the number that is on there and the, the Borg cube in that image is uh, traveling through space or time, or space and time, okay? Just like in the, the movies, okay? Uh, she says, uh, and, and of course, it's a Boeing plane, a bow, like a bow. I only got one flight, number 328, that's a date, full moon, beginning of Passover. She says there's also a TV show, Debris, coming out tomorrow. And this was a fantastic comment. Um, because, oh man, until I can really show y'all guys what, so that you understand. I can kind of explain a little bit, and I will, but it is heavy. I mean, really, really heavy. Let me ask you a question. Where did the Twin Towers go? I know. You would say, well, they went to the ground. Or they went to dust. That they were maybe dustified. That they were molecularly separated. And that would be true. But where did they go? Or where did most of it go? Because these buildings were a hundred and some stories tall. Okay? The amount of material should have been enormous. And there was quite a bit on the ground there, as we know. But we seen as it was falling that it was disappearing and as it disappeared it left some dust behind it left some debris behind but the majority of the building just vanished so there's a little little bit for you I'm gonna get a lot more uh, or quite a bit more into it um, here in just a minute but we're gonna first we're gonna talk some more about the white horse but before even that I wanted to show you this some of you have seen it and a couple of you requested me to uh, mention it and I think it's very relevant um, where have we seen a golden idol uh, or read about a golden idol um, and the people worshiping the golden idol I mean they're they're taking pictures with it, leaning on it, they're worshipping the golden idol, right? And, of course, this golden idol is uh, representative of a person as well. And we all know who that is. Um, do you recall something about Moses coming down off the mountain? And 
when he came down off the mountain, he his face was so aglow he had to cover his face, and there was the people had created a golden idol, a calf, a golden calf that they were worshiping. Uh, do you remember that? What do you think the chances of uh, this being related are? And all this stuff is related, but there's another little secret right here in this image that's related to what I was talking about with the Twin Towers. It says, look ahead, America. Look ahead. Look ahead where? Look ahead into the future. It's talking about time, right? Look ahead. Man. I know you don't understand completely yet. But you will if you're subscribed to this channel. And uh, the major video that I'm going to be putting up about this is going to be on my secure server, which I have, I keep mentioning, and it is done. However, I'm not ready to release it yet because I want uh, a certain video or two to be on there. And these videos are taking up so much of my time to investigate, understand, edit, create, that uh, it's uh, making it difficult for me to get it out yet. Okay? So be aware, you know, this is, this is, uh, somebody said the other day, what was it they said, um, you know, talking about the Bible playing out and, and, uh, the scriptures playing out and that is because the scriptures are the script and it is the word of God and it cannot be changed. They can change the word in the book or the words in the book, but they cannot change the script. It will play out. And so they know the Bible better than me and you. Okay. Um, when I say they, I'm referring to them as a whole. They know the Bible better than me and you. And Satan himself cannot vary from the script. Satan himself cannot vary from the scriptures. It all must come to pass. And that's why we're seeing so much that is relevant to the scriptures if you are paying attention. That is uh, happening. Okay. Um, the only reason I had this here is I just wanted to tell you to be watching these people's hands. Anybody, any event that's going on, even like um, Tiger Woods getting in this car wreck, right? If you watch the interview of them talking to the police or you're watching anything, watch their hands. Because they will tell on themselves with their hands. Okay. Bane and company. Yep. Alright, so let's get into the discussion of the bow. If you haven't seen my previous video, which I'm going to leave up on the channel for a little while longer here. Um, I'm taking my videos down to protect the channel. So that there are less targets that they can easily target my channel with. I realize they could just delete it if they wanted to. But there are algorithms, AIs out there, that have to have targets the way they are programmed in order to zap a channel. Okay? So I'm trying to circumvent their rules in the way that they work in order to keep my channel up. So let's talk about the bow. And different, some diff a few different ways that we have not talked about yet as to um, what it could mean. Take, for instance, a bow of the boat or the bow of the boat is 
represented here. And what does the bow or the boat do? Well, it uh, separates, it cuts through, it, it, it splits, divides the waters, right? It divides the waters, okay? And like I've said before, you have to you have to realize that the symbolism they're using it typically will mean you can look at it from multiple different directions. It will mean and what they are trying to represent are multiple different things sometimes. And I find the fact that the writer had a bow or a bow, you can call it whatever you want. You you have a knee-jerk reaction to assume it's a bow and arrow. And it uh, does represent that in a way. But you have to look deeper, you know, just like we've discussed with the masks and the patterns with how you cut out and design a mask and how a mask itself is designed. In a way, a mask itself is designed like the bow of a boat. Okay? The bow of a boat is used to divide the waters. Right? And if you look at the bow of a boat, say from the side like this, you can see that that kind of looks like a mask. You know how it goes up, comes down off the nose, and then turns and goes down at an angle, just like this. Yeah. It's very fascinating. So, this bow or this bow is being used to divide something, divide the waters to, or divide in, uh, something, okay? And that is another way to look at the bow, okay? Because we're, this is so multifaceted, it's, I know it's difficult to get your mind around maybe what I'm talking about because it's difficult for me to get my mind around what I'm talking about, um, to be honest with you. And then, of course, we have bow or bow or to bow down. Like if you were in uh, great pain or anguish, uh, to bow down. To maybe to worship so but the ones that are using the bow or the bow who are they worshiping well we know don't we we know who they're worshiping some of you may know and I didn't even really know but uh, this harlot here had an album come out it was uh, it was called uh, or when one of the songs on it was called bow down or actually more appropriately bow down okay like if as if she was a queen or a god or something like, like that right and you see this bow down thing being used and associated with the mask as well it says won't bow down but yet this image shows that they are because they are wearing the bow on their face or the bow that is being used to divide something right And of course, you can order your your bow with two bows on either side with bow down written on it as well if you want to. There's different designs that you can get and even associate, associating it with witchcraft, uh, which 
it is witchcraft. It is black magic. Oh boy, you know, what do you say? And I just thought I'd show this one more time. Making sure you understand the way that you create a bowed or bowed mask so it looks like the front of a boat. See it on her face? See how it's bow bowed out? It's just like the front of a boat. Just like a bow. And you see the top right above her head? That is the piece of cloth, the simplest of fabric that you use, which is the definition of bow in the, in the Bible, which is only used once in the entire Bible. And the definition is the simplest of fabric. But even that has multiple different ways you have to look at it. Because fabric is the binding of things together. Okay, like, it's like to divide and bind at the same time. The binding of what together? The binding of people, the binding of minds, the binding of fabric, you know? So you have to cut this thing down the middle, right in the center, and then you take the other sides and you sew it back together and you get your bowed out mask made of the simplest of fabric with two bows on each side. Let me turn off my notifications. Hang on just a second, guys. I forgot to do it again. Okay, that didn't take long, did it? So here's what I mean about binding together to tie up see to tie up treading it uh, brings to mind wheat as well because you have to bind wheat up in order to thresh it to, to separate it from the chaff you see and that's really what's happening here, is, is that there is a, a separation going on, and there is a binding going on, and then the threshing going on, which is the chaos and the horror and everything, and death, to see what the good seed is. They're looking for you. Satan is looking for you, but Father is also looking for you. Now let's talk about a bow in a different kind of way, a different, another additional kind of bow, like a rainbow. Now we, most of us know that the rainbow, uh, if you look at this, if you look at it coming from the scriptures, was uh, something God created to provide us a signal that he would never destroy the world again with water. But why did he destroy the world as the, uh, as the scriptures, as the script says? Why? It is said he did it because all the seed was bad. All the seed, meaning me, you, everybody, it had all been, it had all gone bad. And or was all GMO crops. Okay. It was no longer the original creation. It was altered and that is exactly what they are trying and not just trying but doing not only right now but for the last decades they've been altering 
everything, including us, or at least attempting as much as they can get to us. And what are they altering? They're altering our DNA. What are they altering in the foods? They're altering the DNA of the foods. They're altering everything. So we're right back to the times of Noah, the days of Noah again, right? So it is said that the writer had a bow. So the writer has a bow. He has a bow on his face that has two bows around the ears and is bowed out and is made of the definition of a bow, which is the simplest of fabric, and is colored as a rainbow, and the person that is wearing it themselves is the altered thing, the altered DNA, the transhumanism, the tearing down of the two and combining it into one, just like they did in New York, just like what I was talking about earlier. Okay, now why are they trying, why are they doing this, why is this going on? I believe it is because they are trying to go back or well let me say it like this they are trying to go back to the future I've spoken about the Ouroboros and many other things related to this and many, many times and they we know they want to go back to when man and woman were one when the atom had been not divided that the woman had not been separated from the man that was the creation was perfect and it lived forever they want to live forever they believe they have figured out how to live forever and Everything so far that I've talked about in this video is directly related and relevant to what I'm talking about. And what their goal is, transhumanism. And they want to use their fancy technologies in order to do this. The combining of clay and, and iron, of course. And so, the reason I'm explaining these, these things and telling these things is so you can think about it, consider it, and decide for yourself what you believe. But in this lifetime, it has been made my job, my purpose, not, not a job is a very weak word for what it is it's my purpose it's my passion it's my mission in life to discern and to deliver this information to as many people as possible which is why i have to be super careful with my channel because it's been terminated three times already and i would be going into the fourth termination if it happened again and yes I'm taking preparations for that to potentially and likely completely happen at some point with my secure server that that we're gonna have and we're gonna be able to have all of my relevant videos there so that we can at any time we want be able to pull them up so they're wanting to go back to the garden they're wanting to Combine the man and the woman into one once again. If you study what causes a 
creation. An animal, a human, uh, a frog, a fish, uh, a plant, a leaf on a tree. Whatever it is, whatever type of creation it is. If you study what causes the reproduction habits of that particular creation, whether it's a frog, a bird, a, a flower on a tree. If you study what causes it and what the different types are, you would understand why they want to go back or at least have a better understanding why they want to go back to the garden. You see, in, a, in an environment where there's a lot of chaos and turmoil, the creation or the creature or the plant or whatever it is will try to reproduce very fast with large numbers with shorter lifespans. I've got one that can see. Logic before authority.